the babies. How's everybody doing? I hope that you guys are having a grand day, a grand time, and you're enjoying oneself and everything that you do. I am joined by my lovely co-host, uh, I'm on Miss Ro. What's up, Ro? Hey, how's it going? Hey, you know, I'm chilling like a villain, you know what I'm saying? I just got back from Montgomery, and I was out in LaGrange a little earlier today, and, you know, we're making some big moves. Big, big moves. Mm. <laughs> so today, we are going to recap, of course, that's everyone's guilty pleasure. How to get away with murder. You know, happy Halloween to everybody that's celebrating. And for those countries that are a little ahead of us, uh, shout to you guys. Yeah. So this episode was entitled, Is Somebody Really Dead? Hmm. Hmm. So what what was your take on it, Ro? Well, in the beginning, we learned that there is a dead man. On the news, so we learned that it's all next week because, well, let's face it, all the chicks are, you know, alive. So we have to be the guy, anyways. <laughs> Basically. And we also see a dynamic between Michaela and an older white lady. And the white lady was kind of calling her like baby and stuff. So who could that be your mother, Ash? I, I think so. Because I, I told you uh, last time, I was like, okay, I don't know who that little. White lady in the background was, it was kind of odd, but, you know, family is family. And I'm, a, I'm assuming that it's not the best of relationships just because she was like, before she left the house, I don't know if you saw, but she was like, yeah, don't steal nothing. <laughs> so I don't know right. if the mother, yeah. you know, has like a drinking problem and, you know, she tries to sell people stuff for money. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, she definitely seems, like, ashamed of her, like, I don't know, maybe she was locked up for something. Who knows? It could have been anything about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the next thing was about Bonnie. Um, she actually audio taped Frank and that whole thing about, about Wes. Mm-hmm. And that just made Annalise go insane because she's like, what the heck are you doing up there with Wes? So the whole episode, she was just like, just throwing all these evil stuff to Bonnie. She was just like, oh, well, don't you wish you were up with Frank right now? And, you know, and it was just like really weird to see that dynamic kind of break a little bit. Well, I think that they've always kind of had a weird dynamic. It was kind of always, and I think I alluded to it last week a little bit, is they've always kind of had kind of, I think Bonnie looks at Annalise as like a mother type figure. And even though Annalise may not necessarily want to be her surrogate mother, she's always kind of been that figure in her life. I mean, if you look back on the seasons past, you know, she's always kind of directing Bonnie and telling her, look, you need to do this, look, take care of that. And she just knows that Bonnie's going to take care of it because she trusts Bonnie to an extent, I feel. I feel she trusts Bonnie enough to take care of business and make sure that she does what she's supposed to do, even though, you know, she killed Rebecca because that was pretty messed up. And uh, Annalise was pretty pissed off with that. <laughs> she's like, you know, you killed that girl and you didn't have to, you know, what you do this. She's like, I did it for you. <laughs> that was I so know. Sad. <laughs> Yeah, that was a little creepy, too, right? (laughs) Yeah, that was weird. (laughs) Yeah, like, she'll do anything for Annalise. Mm -hmm. And Frank was like that, too, but let's just say things changed. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. yeah. And and then we learned that the police is at Wes's apartment and that his girlfriend Maggie was, uh, was there. And she's all confused, and she basically called up Wes and told him about that. And, of course, they were trying to figure out, the NYPD was trying to figure out about um, Wes's dad shooting. And, of course, um, Wes was still over with Annalise, and Annalise told him to tell Maggie to lie about being at the library. And, of course, she believed it, because, you know, she's, what else is she going to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, Wes was like, you know, I, I want to go down there. And every minute he was like, I want to go, I want to go. And eventually, the thing that Elise got him to stay was by threatening him. And she said, you know, do I have to chain you like I did Rebecca? And it was just like, Ooh. oh, she really 
Yeah, so oh, he um, yeah he had asked yeah. her he he told her that you know he he was telling half truths you know because he's been basically lying to this girl since probably day one, day one. <laughs> yeah because I think that to an extent he wants to feel normal and he thought if if he got like a regular girlfriend who has a <laughs> career going for her you know she adores him she's a cute little thing yeah. I love her natural hair her hair is so cute but yeah, I. Awesome. Yeah, but I think that he was trying to be normal, which, in any case, anyone listening, being normal is not uh, not really an option for anybody. Uh, there's no such thing as normal. It's really about people accepting themselves for who they are and embracing your differences. Everyone's different. Everybody's got talents. Everybody's got gifts. But trying to be normal, it's so boring. <laughs> Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. So we learned that Annalise gets her license back, but she mm -hmm. has some stipulations. Mm -hmm. um, her stipulations are that she needs to obtain from drinking. She needs to attend AA like three times a week. She needs to submit a random alcohol testing. And she needs to have a change of conduct in and out of the court. How do you feel about that, Ash? I mean, I think that that's really, that's feasible. I mean, for this fool to be able to get her license back, uh, yeah, she needs to do that stuff. Yeah, she needs to yeah. do it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, it's a two-strike system, so, I mean. No, I think they, they told either. her one, did they tell her one strike? I thought they told her one strike. So one she, strike? Really? I uh, think I so. I don't, I could be wrong. And those out there, if you guys are listening, definitely tag me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, One Love Ash, was it one or two um, strikes or instances that they give her? Because I don't remember. I want to say it was one, but you could be right, Ro. It could be two. Yeah. It could be two. Well, it's still not like a lot. No. Yeah, yeah, she still, yeah, she still has to do right. <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot of, you know, leeway, if you will. So, of course, uh, Bonnie actually accuses Wes to be responsible for everything mm -hmm. since his little crush <laughs> on Rebecca. You know, Rebecca, she she really started it all. If you think about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was great to see Annalise back teaching. You know, unfortunately Wes was absent. And I mean their case was like a veteran that had aggravated assault charges. And that really puny guy, Drake, he got first chair because he wanted to put PTSD as the theory. Mm. And that was pretty cool. <laughs> and, of course, the uh, the president was checking in on Annalise's class so she can ask him about Wes, ask her about Wes. Because uh, the NYPD was like, hey, you know, we're looking for this kid. And Annalise was like, you know, looking out for him again, saying, hey, he was out of class today, I don't know where he is and whatnot. And it seems like Annalise will do whatever to help out these kids, especially Wes. It seems like the friend she ever had. Yeah, and you just, you get to see a little bit more of that, which is really cool because she really, uh, was it this week? Was it this week when she was on the staircase and he was like, oh, you're just trying to protect, yeah, I think it was this week. He was like, you know, you're just trying to protect Frank. And she's like, what? I lost a baby because of him. Why would I try to protect him? And then Wes was yeah. like, what? 
And then she told him, and you know, because he didn't know, obviously, there's no way for him to have known that. Um, so that was very, uh, that was a big part of it. That was a very, very big part of um, of that situation there. So I don't know, Earl. I, it's it's looking quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, it sure is, especially since um, the whole group knows now about the whole Wes and the dad murder shooting because um, Adelise finally tells everybody. I mean, it's kind of crazy that like they're finally figuring out about it. Because we as the audience have known for a while. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And I think that it that's also kind of created a wedge between them and what and Wes. Because wow. I think that they totally feel like I mean, I'm sure they've been feeling for it for a while, but they definitely feel like Wes is like the favorite. They don't know the whole story of how they're connected. And so they just see, okay, well, Annalise is protecting this fool a whole bunch. <laughs> you know. <laughs> understatement really girl. <laughs> that's really yeah. yeah that's like an understatement because I mean I I don't know I'm so split because it's I don't know if I said this on the last show but Annalise you just you can't trust it you just never know what angle she's gonna come at so when stuff happens I'm like I don't know if I believe that because she knows how to make things look like what they're not really <laughs> and so I, yeah. I don't know I mean I don't know I, part of me wants to say that she's going to forgive Frank and, you know, let him come back and, you know, happy fun time day and kumbaya and all that stuff. But then another part of me was like, maybe she would want him to come back so she could kill him. But also, sure. I feel like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I think it's too easy to kill off Frank. Way too easy. I think it's too easy and it's too predictable to kill off Frank. That's what I feel like right now. Yeah. Or, you know, she could try to bring him back so she can keep an eye on him, you know? Would you, I'd rather have, you know, keep your enemies closer, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't feel right having this guy here, like, he can jump out of nowhere and just slap, like, slice my throat open any minute mm, now, you know? Right. I wouldn't want that, like, you know, just to have that on your conscience, like, oh my gosh, he's gonna come after me any minute now. But, you know, back to the story, um... So, I like to call her Idiot Laurel, but he's, like, calling up Frank and leaving him messages again, and she's like, I can't believe you told the cop, you told the cop, she busted his name, if you ever do that, you know, I'll never forgive you, and it's just like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? (laughs) I just really wish that she was the one that got killed in the house, I I really, really do. It would have been nice. It would have yeah, been so perfect. So good. <laughs> and of course, uh, yeah. I mean, I know you must have enjoyed the whole Annalise and that rival lawyer group. Oh boy, they were going at it. I thought that Annalise was definitely gonna get in trouble. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I thought they was gonna like put uh, her out or something. Yeah, but I mean, Annalise, she had like a. Uh, a really depressing moment when she was just crying and well not really crying but before that she was eating chips like you know on the toilet <laughs> and of course Michaela like figured out something about the story uh, that the story was actually a lie and uh, that really sabotaged that uh <laughs> that that first chair guy like really badly <laughs> but uh of course Connor and then Connor had wait, the wait, 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 wait. That story wasn't a lie. That story was true. That that was the actual truth. Remember, she got it from somebody else, though. She had got it through... Um, I don't forget how she got it, but the story was true, and that's what led Annalise to go and um, intervene with the... Um, 
with the the military lady, the chick that was on trial. And she's like, hey, I found out that you were working a freaking office job when this alleged um, incident happened of your, you know, your post-traumatic stress. And that's when she had to come clean. Because beforehand, she was going into the whole, oh, well, because she said it was some, some, uh, some type of uh, truck or something had exploded and blah, blah, blah. Well, it turned out that never happened. So Michaela didn't mess up the guy purposely. Because that story was true. The story was true. But they were able to twist it around when Bonnie was able to get that, um, the information from the actual records folks. So right. that, um, yeah, cause I was like, I was like, no, that was, now that was, that was true. Even though the lady lied, the lady that was on trial, she was lying. <laughs> no, but. Yeah. Yeah. Poor thing. But, um, uh, yeah. Well, okay. Um, so Connor was trying to talk to Wes about, about, go, about not going to the police. Um, and he basically was, let me say that again. So Connor was trying to talk Wes out of going to the police by blaming everything on him. <laughs> and then he also threatened him <laughs> if he mentioned his name. I felt like that wasn't the right way to go about that. <laughs> oh, you think? <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, I know he's not, like, in the best place right now. The love of his life is just going on dates and have the life of his own and away from him. But, goodness, that was, like, the worst, like, thing I've ever seen in a while. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, you're going to go to the police? Well, don't go and talk about me. And I was just like, okay. Yeah, he's a strange one. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got yeah. a, lot of, a lot of issues going on, I think. Um, I mean, at least we know Nate's still a good guy, you know, he heard an anonymous tip, you know, he went and told him at least, you know, he's, uh, he's still hurting, but he still knows what's right and what's wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, he should know something, you know, to see somebody, I ain't never seen somebody broke down so bad. I mean, this fool lost like all of his rank, honestly. If I was him, I'd probably just figure out another career path. Because he lost, yeah. like, everything. Mm. Everything. He was, like, really high detective. <laughs> yeah. Like, All right, he's deputy. like a deputy now. That's so sad. Mm. That's <laughs> like 10 years down the track. <laughs> Basically. Oh, um, poor Nate. Mm, mm, mm. I just love that. <laughs> well, like I said, Oliver got a date, and, you know, Asher was just yapping on about this blonde chick to make uh, um, uh, Michaela jealous. And let's see here. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, and uh, Wes was pushing his girlfriend away, and you know, she was like, but I love you! Mm -mm. And then he was like, get out! No, he wasn't like that, he was like, get out. I was in my head, he was like that. He was like, get out! But no, he was really just yeah, like, he was just you like, know. you need to leave. Like, he didn't even say it yeah, back. Or, like it. He didn't even say he it back, really. and, you know, that probably hurt her even more. You know, it's like, wow, this fool didn't even say it back. That ain't I know, good. right? Yeah. Of course, you know, she tears up and finally goes, and was like, bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, at least it was like, it's just not working out. I'm like, but it didn't really felt like he broke up with her, so it's like, he probably thinks he did, but she's not gonna think that way. You know what I mean? I mean, that's a possibility. Yeah, I think it might be one of those. Because he was telling Laura what he... Well, let's not get to that. I need to I need to breathe it before I get to that. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, our veteran, she got a veteran treatment court and uh, for substance abuse help. And, of course, she got kicked out of the core, and it was, like, a misdemeanor. Um, she was, like, kind of concerned. She was like, I don't have substance abuse or anything. And Annalise was like, you say you need help. This is how you're going to need help. I was like, just do what she told you to do. Exactly. 
You want to get slapped? <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, I was like, uh oh, she learned her lesson last time, I hope. I know, right? And I know this is probably one of your favorite parts when Oliver's like making out with the guy, right? Mm-hmm. And then he kind of like, he kind of stops the guy and he's like, wait, before you come inside, the dude's like, wait, uh, who said I'm coming inside? He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, yo. And it's like, well, I was going through my head was like, dang, sit, I mean, I understand Connor was pretty promiscuous, but goodness, but you had a good point about that. I, my that. point of it, and, and ain't nobody brought it up all season, we just gonna tiptoe around it. How y'all gonna <laughs> act like he ain't HIV positive? How we gonna act like he ain't HIV positive? That's what I'm trying to understand. He is HIV positive. He need to be disclosing his status to these people because guess what? I guarantee there's people that are HIV positive that are watching this show and are probably doing the same thing he's doing and not disclosing their status. So I think that that's something that they really need to make sure that they focus on because people, you know, life imitates art. And I feel like that's a very important aspect that needs to be, you know, clarified. Yeah, so. well, I mean, you, you can always say maybe some guys that are, or girls that are HIV positive are doing that. You know, you can't really say all, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some people are. Probably the majority of people are, but you still have some people that are maybe, you know, will identify with Oliver. Is his yeah. name? Okay. You got, it right. you got it right. Okay, great. Because <laughs> I totally <laughs> always forget him. Yeah, so I think that there are some people that are probably like Oliver that, you know, they I mean, have issues, yeah, you yeah. know, expressing themselves or whatever the case is. So, yeah. You know, and yeah, I and I get probably. that. Yeah, I, I totally get yeah. that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, and the whole Asher and the Michaela thing, you know, uh, um, Asher, <laughs> Asher comes all the way down to the, um, Michaela's place to brag about getting laid, and of course Michaela didn't believe him. You know, she's like, I knew he was lying, and he's <laughs> like, Well, I only made the thing lie to make a point. You know, it was like, You're my woman, and she's like, What? I'm not your woman. <laughs> and uh, and then Ashley was like, Well, you're basically my family, and I totally was thinking of like Lilo and Stitch, you know, Aww, Stitch was like, my family, You're my family. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to think about that. And then she was like, well, I never had a family. And of course, she's like, well, I lost mine. And then they had this whole, like, they defined the relationship is what the kids nowadays say. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, I like you. And then he's like, oh, why don't you say it? Yeah, I like you. It's like, wow, what are they, like, 10? So mm-hmm. it's like about time, Michaela. Goodness. You've been in denial for, like, the past two seasons. So that was kind of nice to see, I suppose. And let's see here. Um, I okay. Here's the part which probably made me want to throw up. Of course, Wes destroys Frank's recording tape that he must have stolen from Annalise. And of course, he's with Laurel. And Laurel was like, you know, hey, I'm not in love with Frank anymore. And then these two of them make out. And then they remember Maggie, and then they start having sex. And at the same time, Asher and Mikhail are doing it wherever they're at. So it was kind of a weird episode. But there's still more, too, kitties. Let's see here. Um, I don't remember. Oh, while all that's going on, Annalise is called a floral, like, hey, if you're with Wes, you're fired. You know, <laughs> and you made the point about that, because you were like, hey, um, maybe she th- thought that if she's with her, I mean, she, if she's with Wes, that um, she'll probably try taking him to, like, you know, to, to turn himself in or something. That's what you were thinking, right? I was thinking that, and, yeah, that, you know, she probably, I mean, Annalise, you know, she's still human, even though she does inhuman stuff. She probably was thinking maybe they came together and decided to go to the police together. Maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Because she's the only one unaccounted for, and Wes gone. She's like, okay, these two might be planning to go to the damn police. I'm going to kick somebody's behind. <laughs> you know, I'm about to go. 
I'm about to go rogue and tear two behinds up. That's what I'm going to have to do. Oh. <laughs> okay, and then we found out on the news that Mahoney's son is in custody for murder. And mm. everybody thinks, it's like, oh, it must be Wes, you know? And then we they show, like, Wes and Laurel in bed, and they look at the same thing. And then mm-hmm. it says it's Charles Mahoney. And, and then we find out that Frank sent him. And it's just like, what can Frank do? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, if, if he can only use his powers for good. <laughs> and, and of course, at the end, we learn that Asher is the one that's okay. And we find out that he was just drunk table dancing at some club. <laughs> and Michaela ends up finding him. And we he find was, out that. You know, he, was at the, um, he was at the hall, bro, where he works. <laughs> what? Wait, that was, oh, oh, no, he was like he was drunk out of his mind but he was basically um because she went to his room first and she was like okay this fool's not in his room and um yeah she was yeah he was in like the you know he's partying with like the freaking the the college kids which is really weird because he's old in comparison yeah, to yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like my age. <laughs> i mean if he's in like you know law school, he's gotta be like, you know, close to me, I mean. <laughs> um, well, uh, okay, so Annalise basically called him, um, and called him to her house, right? Yeah, see, that that's what I'm telling people. Annalise, she can't really, she can't be trusted, y'all, because she be doing yeah. some other stuff. See, every time, every single time, I think, I have Annalise uh, and this show figured out. She t- throw us a curve ball. So when she's when uh Asher Yes. Yes, okay. When Asher is talking with Michaela, he's like, Yeah, Annalise called me and the others. He didn't name who was who, he just me and the others to her house and didn't call you because you were with your family. And that's why Michaela's like like a question mark. She's like, Why the heck wasn't I called? You know, that was weird. You know, and so that just further, you know, creates even more of a question mark of, um, of what's going down. But, um... I mean, I do remember she did have, like, some, some kind of a DUI. Didn't she have, like, a DUI or something at one point? One of those episodes? I can't look. It wasn't it like was, a... Well, she was a it was something weird. I think it was, like, um... I can't yeah. remember because sometimes they go back too far sometimes and it kind of throws me off. I couldn't tell if that was in real time or if that was like maybe when they first started Annalise's course and stuff. But yeah, something had happened and yeah, I think it was something about like drinking and driving. And I think she probably wrecked her car or something like that. Yeah. So, so I don't know if that factors into anything. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. So did did you? Well, we didn't talk about, you know, Nate and Annalise having that conversation, did you? Um, I touched on it a little bit, but you can talk about it some more. Yeah, but no, them having that conversation, and then he telling her that he's, you know, he's seeing quote unquote the the other council lady. You can kind of see in Annalise's face, like she's trying to act like she's cool, but uh, you know, she got out that car. You can kind of tell she was hurt. She still has feelings for him, but they're not strong enough to make her really care for him. It's like you kind of want nope. your cake to eat it too. You know what I'm saying? You you can't have both. You can't have it both ways. Yeah. It's either you want the cake or you, mm-hmm. you you don't. It's like oh somebody else got the cake now I want it back. No, you can't do that. But she can't she have just a slither? She want a slither of everybody cake though, bro. That you can't do that. Oh. <laughs> Every time somebody got a brand new cake out there cut. She got to get a slice of that. Well, you, you can't do that. Mm-mm. Well, I'm glad she no, stopped a, drinking. Yeah. yeah, if she wants to keep the license, she will. Yeah, because they going to, you said they said that they're going to do a uh, random alcohol test on her, right? Blood mm-hmm. test. Yeah. They got a lot of stuff to make sure that this fool is <laughs> or not. Yeah, they've been gutting for her for a while. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Like, yep. Cause she got a yeah. She got a table drinking. She got a ten eight eight three times a week. 
And it's gonna be random alcohol for intestines, so you don't even know where it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be hard for him to leave to leave the bottle again. Yep. This is yeah, very right. true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's basically everything. You know, I don't know. Frank is just kind of on the outskirts. Something's telling me that Frank's going to get back cool with them because I think he's too much of a main character. They're not going to kill him off. That would be no. too easy to kill off Frank. I don't see them doing that. I don't see that happening. I just I just don't see it. So, I yeah. I don't know. Something's telling me that Frank's going to be back and everything's not going to be the way it was. But, like you said, you keep your enemies closer so you can watch them and see what yeah. they're getting into and stuff. But... I don't see, uh, I don't know. It's going to be I quite mean, he interesting. Makes a good, um, he makes a good antagonist, you know? Because it's yeah. like, where's Frank? Ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, I still, but it still sucks to not see him, like, you know, like he used to be. Yeah, like, you know, he would usually be there, like you said, like every other scene, or, oh, there's Frank, you know, pushing up the wall. And it's like, to <laughs> not see him every show, or as much in every show, it's kind of weird. Got a whole new look and everything. Yeah, you know, like you know, I really liked Frank in the suit. I liked him in his suit, his scruffy little yeah, beard. Yes, yeah, yeah. I liked Frank there. And now Frank oh, didn't. Frank is off the grid now, and I, I just don't know. I'm mm. I'm nervous for Frank. <laughs> No, Frank's fine. He's a big boy. He can take care of himself. He ain't got no choice. And Elise on him shoot. <laughs> Well, yeah. how many episodes supposed to be have left? One or uh, two? two. I think they said, believe they said two episodes until we find out who's dad. Yay. 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 <laughs> the only person left is Connor. And this is my theory, and I could be wrong, but I believe that Connor's going to be the one killed. Because also in the preview, I don't know if you saw or not, Will, but in the preview for next week, they say, they allude that somebody betrays Annalise. And Connor, he been kind of jumping off the the um, the fence from time to time in the last two seasons. Last season, you know, I remember he confronted Annalise and was like, look, you know, you owe us and dad, and you're the one got us into this mess. You need to protect us and blah, blah, blah. Or why should we trust you anymore? So he's always jumping off the handle. So my prediction is I think they may off Connor because he doesn't really serve too much of a purpose. He keeps getting all pissy-tailed. His boyfriend broke up with him. He don't have much going for him. And therefore, he would be somebody that he wouldn't miss too much. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, that's my um, prediction. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see a um, see a gay like playboy. You don't really see that very often. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I mean, what else he got going for him? <laughs> yeah, he just got a lot of problems. He got a lot yeah, of problems yeah, going he, on. So yeah, he's like this lovesick puppy right now. Yeah, he just like I said, he I see him betraying Annalise. And I see him getting killed in the house. That's what I think it's going to be. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's... Yeah, so to leave not to, because like I said, they can't kill off Wes. Wes is a main character. And mm-hmm. she loves him as if he's her freaking child. Anyways, they ain't killing off Wes. Mm-hmm. Too easy. I know. Black lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all lives matter. But definitely we're talking about the black ones today. Mm-hmm. But, um... Yeah, so I would say, I'd say Connor's going to go say, you know, he's going to have a, a dirt nap real soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good prediction. I believe it to be so. All right, so that pretty much concludes our recap show for the day. Ro, do you have anything else that you want to say to the people or any way that you want people to follow you or get in contact with you for anything? Um, my Twitter, Instagram is Rochisan. It's R O C H I E underscore 
S A M. Awesome sauce, Rochi sauce. That's a cute name. I wonder whoever gave it to you. They're pretty awesome. They must you know, be awesome. Same. My brother, gave, my brother gave it to me actually. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, my brother. Yeah. Cool beans. Alrighty. Well, I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Ash Said It Daily. This is our How to Get Away with Murder recap. Happy Halloween, each and every one of you. Thank you for checking out the blog on ashsaidit.com, ashsaidit.com. We've got so much stuff coming up on ashsaidit.com next. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Remember to keep pushing forward in your dream. Don't ever let anyone talk you out of your dream. The only reason that they're trying to talk you out of your dream is because someone talked them out of theirs. And they don't want to see you living your dream. Why? Because that means that they can live their dream. You just got to believe. That's the first step. I'll holla at y'all on the flip side. Have a great Saturday night. I will holla back at y'all on the flip. Deuces. Yeah. Deuces, deuces.